Welcome to another week of Dodger Baseball, a week filled with player reunions and angsty groundskeepers. Thankfully, the Dodgers weren't as bad as the weather while they wrapped up their road trip. First, they went to Cleveland, where the pitching seemed to take a day off, and the team lost 3-8, while Noah Syndergaard somehow pitched a quality start for Cleveland. The next day was a Kershaw start, but the overzealous grounds crew at Cleveland decided to postpone the game after just two innings, wasting a valuable Kershaw start and forcing the teams to play two games on the 24th. Thankfully, the Dodgers went on to win both games in the doubleheader, even though the grounds crew paused the first game a second time. At this point, we've all moved on, but my god, I've never seen a more paranoid grounds crew than the Guardians one. Both times they delayed the games, it was at least 30 minutes before the rain even began. Maybe this is their revenge for us robbing them in the Rosario Syndergaard trade. Anyways, after Cleveland, the team went to Boston to face the Red Sox, the team that the Dodgers seemed to love swapping players with. Which meant it was a big reunion for a ton of people. Again, the Dodgers were able to win two of three, with the only loss coming out of a brutal start from Julio Urias. So with that, let's look at our pitching. Obviously, you can pretty much ignore the Kershaw one since the game got cut early. Lance Lynn had his worst start as a Dodger, but still walked away with a win. Ryan Pepio came in for four innings of relief in the second doubleheader game, following three innings from Ryan Yarbrough. It's a shame Ryan Brazier didn't pitch that game, or it would have been Ryan's all the way down. We also saw the return of Gavin Stone, who actually looked fantastic in six innings before Roberts decided to roll him out for a seventh inning, and he gave up back-to-back -back bombs. But none of that really mattered because of how hot the bats were. Leading the charge was Mookie Betts, who has played so well recently that he's arguably the frontrunner for MVP. The man got 16 hits in six games this week, capping it all off with a home run over the monster. And Betts launched to left. Mookie is a monster to the top of the monster. So he'll be leading the clutch list this week alongside Freddie Freeman, who recovered from his small slump and gave us 13 hits this week, including his 50th double of the season. I'm also going to put Max Muncy on the clutch list. He got eight hits this week, including a home run on Saturday. Now the 3-1 from Paxton. Drilled to right field. Back goes Verdugo. It is good. That's number 30 for Max Muncy. But shortly after that home run, when the game was on the line and the bases were loaded, Muncy found himself the victim of an absolutely horrible call. 0-2. That's strike three! He punches him out! He got him again! Muncy didn't think so, but Martin puts him away with the bases loaded. And he's done! And here comes Dave Roberts. He's been running out. A manager has been thrown out. Roberts has been tossed. They leave them loaded. Martin comes on and does what he's been doing all season long. That pretty much ended the game for the Dodgers, even though they still fought hard in the ninth. But maybe it's not a great idea to have an umpire who's six foot eight judging a pitch below the strike zone. Anyways, as ridiculous as that was, it was nice to see the team get fired up like that, even with such a healthy division lead. Which reminds me, I'm actually going to be putting Dave Roberts on the clutch list this week. In the midst of a shaky pitching rotation, we've seen a lot of great managing from Roberts over the last three weeks or so. And for how much shit we give him, we do need to throw him a bone from time to time. So this one's for you, Dave. Let's just hope he can take that great managing into the postseason this year. On the list of concern, I'm going to put Julio Urias, who has given us such an inconsistent season with his future on the line. He's now sitting at a 4.41 ERA after 19 starts. At this point, all we can do is hope he heats up for the postseason. I'm also going to put Michael Bush on the list, although it's a very light level of concern. He was called up after the Dodgers did indeed put JD on the IL to let him heal up before the postseason. And while Bush did get his first major league home run in a rather emotional moment, it's the only hit he's gotten since coming back and he's now sitting on a 169 batting average. It probably doesn't matter since I doubt he'll be with us for the rest of the season, but it would be nice to see him get comfortable with big league pitching. 
Since I'm sure you're all wondering, Austin Barnes will remain off the list of concern after continuing to raise his average this week. So there's some heartwarming news for you. Now the team will come home to face the Diamondbacks and the Braves, which will certainly be challenging, but at least it'll hopefully keep the team fired up. Here are the division standings at the moment. We have a nice lead, but the Diamondbacks are eight for their last 10, so they could prove to be a threat. I guess we'll find out soon enough. See you guys next week.